Championships Riviera Country Club, it's live opening round coverage of the California Classic. This is going to be a compelling four days of golf. A lot of storylines to follow as we move through the weekend and we take a look at the leaderboard here in round one. We've got a tie at the very top at four under to this point. Meanwhile, our featured golfer looking to get off to a hot start and maybe make an early move up the AM leaderboard. And there's a good start. That one in the fairway here to get the tournament rolling. Boy, that front bunker swallows up a lot of approaches to the first, but this one landed in a great spot, and it's on the green in two. Oh, yeah. That's how you take advantage of a par five. It's in for an eagle three. Superb. So while you're looking to make birdie at number one, you'd be happy with a par four at this second hole. It's 471 yards, but the winds are a factor. as a strong par four. And a great tee shot there coming off the eagle at one in the fairway and looking for more at number two. Well, had a good look at the green, but couldn't cash it in. In the rough now, wondering what might have been. Oh, yes. You love to get breaks like that early in a tournament. That one in for a surprise birdie. Moving now to the 434 yard, part 4 third at Riviera. Best way to attack here is to carry that fairway bunker on the left to set up a good angle on your approach. Oh, and it's a narrow fairway here at three, but that'll be in a great spot. Second shot coming up, and we say hello to Iona Steven. 125 is the number, just a flick. The pin up front in the right-hand corner of the green. Ah, good shot. Safely on the green and a birdie chance. This is a 16-footer. Ah, that is well jumped straight into the cup. It's a birdie here at number three. 
Arriving now at the 236-yard par-3 fourth, what Ben Crenshaw once called the greatest par-3 hole in America. High praise from the 19-time PGA Tour winner. Too much spice on that one. That flies the green and he'll be chipping out of the rough. Woo, Nelly. <laughs> Was just past the halt. A difficult putt coming now. Sizable putt from 16 feet. smile a very good putt there to save his bar and he'll remain at four under you can see here at the par four fifth there's a lot going on it is one of the most interesting holes at Riviera that canyon wall and out of bounds on the right then you have the trees down the left but what really makes this hole distinctive is that grass mound cutting into the fairway just short of the green
Beautiful tempo to that swing, and this is going to wind up squarely in the fairway. So, Iona, this is second from the fairway. It's 125 yards left to the hole and the pin on the left portion of the green. This could be good. Oh, I always knew that was going to be a good shot when it left the club face. What's that? Eight or nine feet. Excellent shot. Eight feet remaining here for birdie. Just when you think you're going to make birdie. Now, you have to really concentrate on this and at least make par. One finished off. It is a part here at five. And he'll remain right where he is. Now to the sixth, affectionately known in some circles as the donut hole. And it's easy to see why. One pot bunker dead in the center of the green. And that's the genius of the hole. As it takes away the safe spot and forces you to play target golf. And that one not on the green, but not in a terrible spot either. Sitting up in the short grass. Red there. It is a par here at the sixth, and he'll stay right where he is. Moving on to the seventh, 408 yard par four with a massive bunker running down the left side and a barranca down the right. Fairway narrows considerably at the 270 yard mark, so accuracy off the tee critical. Well, look out, that is way right. So, it's official. Will not hit every fairway today. First fairway missed in the rough. Let's see what they can do from here. Second shot from the rough, down to Iona. 121 yards is the number we're looking at. Although the ball is sitting down a little in this rough, he's going to have to come in steep and dig it out. That's a good shot, and more importantly, too, a green in regulation, so birdie chance. Oh, yes, plenty of pace to get up that slope. It is in for a birdie.
The surprises don't stop here on Riviera's front side as we come to the 433-yard par 4 8th. One of course designer George C. Thomas's all-time favorites, a split fairway is the unique feature here. Like many holes, this one forces you to really have a strategy. Boy, the rhythm is definitely there today. Another wonderful tee shot. Yeah, playing for this right side fairway, and that is right where you want to be. Second shot coming up. Let's check in for the first time with Nota Begay the third. Well, he's looking at 108 yards to the front of the green, 141 to the hole. Would not surprise me a bit if you were to stick this one close. And that one barely makes the front of the green. Do you realize if you just miss hit the middle of the club by a quarter of an inch, you lose 10%. That's right, 10%.
Nope, that'll be short. Maybe by a good 10 feet. Okay, good roll there. It is a par here at the eighth, and this will remain a one-shot advantage. On to Riviera's ninth now at 458 yards. You get a look at the beautiful clubhouse in the distance, but don't let your mind wander from the task at hand. This is no easy hole. Bunkers line the fairway on both sides, and three more greet you up near this elevated green. That will do just fine. From the fairway, we check in with Noda. Beautiful look at the ninth with the clubhouse in the background, but players beware, severely uphill. Whatever club you select, add one more. That's got to be disappointing. Good line in the fairway, and the approach winds up in the bunker. Oh, would you expect anything less for the way things are going? Everything is dropping right now, even balls from off the green. Up next, the 315-yard par 4 tent. This may be the most beloved hole at Riviera. Short par 4 that offers so many options. Certainly drivable, but only a perfect drive will hold this green. And the miss right will usually result in a bogey or worse. Nope, that wasn't the right line, and he'll pay the price as this ball going to run off the fairway and into the bunker. Nope, that is not much of an improvement. An awkward little bunker shot. Just splash it out, let the ball run towards the flag. Okay, not bad out of the sand, and that's what will remain, trying to grind out a par. Safely in. Well, it's a par here at the 10th. And the lead's going to remain two. Again, here's a hole where you know instantly you're at Riviera. 583-yard, 11th. It's the second par five on the course. But you, you look at those eucalyptus trees lining both sides of the fairway. That's Riviera. And then the Grass Barranca, which is a couple of hundred yards from the green. You have to factor that in on your second shot. Terrific hole. Boy, a good round going here on this Thursday, and that another fine effort off the tee. So in the fairway, but a pretty good number to carry here for a second to the par five.
I'm not sure he got every bit of that three-way trying to get home to this par five and two, but still in the ball game for a birdie. Now this for another birdie. Wow, just a pair off target. Those are the ones that will drive you crazy. So that brushed in for par here at 11. And he's going to stay too clear of the field. Up next, a toughie, the 479-yard par 412. It is a gentle left to right, so fading the ball is encouraged. Up near the green, beware of that lone sycamore tree known as the Humphrey Bogart tree, so named because he loved watching golf and relaxing under its shade. He just keeps motoring right along. Another good tee shot right there. Oh, that is not good. That's over by the 13th tee. With all the elements of his game have been in sync today, a terrific shot right there. It's all about getting it inside that three-foot circle around the hole. That was a really nice shot. That one safely in, and it's a par here at 12. And he'll remain at six under par. Well, here's the genius of the design at Riviera. Number 12 was asking you to hit a little bit of a fade. 13, well, they're telling you to hit a draw. That's a good golf course. When you have to work the ball both ways, this is a really tough driving hole. Yeah, that's a nice swing, and the result is going to be a tee shot that is set up just fine. From the fairway, Noda, this is second. Looking at 149 to the hole, swinging it great today. Would not surprise me if he stuck it close. And that ball looked very good in the air. Just doesn't quite finish up that near to the flag, but still on the green.
Well judged. That is in for par here at 13. And he'll remain right where he is. Head now to the 14th, the par three at 192 yards. This green's on a slight incline and given the ocean air, probably plays a little longer than you think. The narrow green is flanked by two bunkers left and another to the right. Okay, that one's dancing. An outside look here for Birdie. Mm, not quite online, and that'll drift a couple feet by. No issues there. It is a par here at 14. And he'll stay right where he is. The 15 hold here at Riviera at 487 yards of par four. It is the number two handicap hole, so that can speak to its difficulty. The one well-placed bunker at the elbow of the dog leg must be avoided, and the green is believed by many to be the toughest to read on the course. No issues here. That is into the fairway. Now, no to his second from the fairway. He's looking at 153 yards to the front, 159 to the hole, sitting in the front left hole location. Uh, that's not too bad. Good shot. Uh, inside 20 feet, I would imagine. So a good chance, really an outside chance for Betty. Oh, yes, a perfect cut there. It is in for Birdie here at 15. He stretches the lead to three with three to play here in this opening round. The 16th hole at Riviera, the final par three of the round. It's a tough one at 166 yards. Hit it anywhere on the putting surface, you'll likely be just fine. Miss, and you're almost certain to be in one of the four bunkers framing the entirety of the green. Yeah, nicely done, just outside of 10 feet, and that's what he'll have left for his birdie. 12 feet still to go. Okay, that'll be a par here at 16. He's going to hold on to that three-shot lead. We make our final turn back up toward the clubhouse as we come to the 590-yard par 517. Getting on here in two is no sure thing, especially given all the bunkers that pop up along the way. so simple when you're going good, doesn't it? And that is yet another solid drive. Now from better than 300 yards out, a second to the par five.
Oh, and that is going to be into that deep bunker short of the green. Ideal result there, hoping to maybe get this close. It is on the green, but not where you want to be. Well, that's good touch right there. problems there. That's a par here at 17. And this will remain a three-shot lead. Here's a tough one to finish out our day at Riviera, the famous 475-yard par 4 18. This one cut right up against the side of the hill on the left. You'll need to keep something in the fairway here to have a good approach into that renowned 18th green. Just what you want at this point in the round. You're trying to find a rhythm, hit fairways, hit the middle of the club face. That's what they did right there from the fairway. Let's go to Noda. Tough not to get distracted with the majestic amphitheater setting here at the 18th at Riviera, but be mindful. You must land the ball left of the hole to get it close. Chance now for another birdie. And this certainly would be a bonus if it goes in. You just need to make sure you get it there and give yourself a chance. Never up, never in. I think that's what you want to do. Good luck. Yeah, they can't all go in. So it's happened there. That's for par at the last. And this is going to be an opening round, 64. Sensational. This a good position to be in after day one for our featured golfer. Just a shot back and playing well. Yeah, there are thereabouts. I think that's a good uh, indicator that uh, they're certainly going to be in contention come Sunday. So that's it for us. For Frank, Noda, Iona, and our entire crew, Rich Lerner saying thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time on EA Sports PGA Tour.
EA Sports and the Corn Ferry Tour are proud to feature some of the best young talent in the world of golf. From Pacific Palisades, California and historic Riviera Country Club, live second round coverage of the California Classic. Things starting to slowly take shape here on this Friday. For some, it is a race for the top prize. For others, it's a fight to stick around for the weekend as we show you the leaderboard. A number of folks in contention, including our leader. Yeah, that's a beauty there to get this second round underway. Well within range from here, a second now to the par five. Uh, that's the danger of trying to run one up there. That's into the long, thin bunker that guards the front of this first hole. Hmm. Looking to splash this softly onto the green. Yeah, look how quick that was. Very difficult to get that to stop, even out of the sand. And that race is right on by. Okay, good putt there, but it is a bogey here at one, and he's going to fall to three shots off the lead. Next up, the number one handicap hold at Riviera, the 471-yard par four second, playing into the prevailing ocean breeze, making it play that much longer. Par is a very good score here. Is starting up the right side. And that's going to play just fine. So after the early bogey, the response is a solid tee shot here at the second. Noticeable breeze coming right to left as he eyes his second. Chance now to get back to even here at two. It's for birdie. Just five feet left. Ah, good putt there. It's in for par here at the second. And he'll remain three shots off the pace. Not a long hole here. The third at Riviera, just 434 yards. This is about position. And really the best way to get at the whole location is to sail it over that fairway bunker on the left. That'll give you a really good angle. Oh, and it's a narrow fairway here at three, but that'll be in a great spot. Second shot coming up. Let's bring in Iona Steven. He's left himself 133 yards to the flag, pin in the back right portion of the screen.
Good chance at one. I know it's the second shot golf course, but what an honest shot. I don't care. That's the first, the last. That's a great shot. Four feet, all that's left for birdie. Okay, nicely done. That's in for birdie here at three. And that'll move him to seven under par. Well, this is just a great par three. 236 yards, the fourth hole. And as they like to say on tour, you can't fake this one. This will take your best shot, and you'd be happy with a three here. Boy, that one did not want to slow down at all, and it winds up running right through the green. In. It is a good par here at number four. And he's going to remain one shot off the pace. Up next, Riviera's 434-yard par four fifth. A lot to worry about here. Canyon wall and OB on the right, trees down the left, and, of course, the iconic grass mound, which cuts into the fairway short of the green. And we'll have to see here. It looked like that ball hopped from the lighter rough into the heavier stuff. The lie is not a friendly one, but still a chance to get on in two with a good shot here. Ah, uh, good shot. Safely on the green and a birdie chance. 14 feet to the hole. It's going to leak out to the right and trickle away. Not the right read there. Okay, that one brushed in for Bogey here at the fifth. And he's going to fall out of the lead and wind up a shot back. You don't see this too often, do you? a bunker cut directly into the green. And usually bunkers are front or guarding the right or left side. This one's smack in the center. It is one of the most unusual holes in all of golf. 169 yards, the par 3-6 here at Riviera. Oh, 
yeah, that's how you take that bunker out of play. A super shot into this six green. Birdie putt now moving to his right. Okay, nicely played. That's in for Birdie here at six. And he will definitely not say no to that. Here's another hole that is distinctly Riviera. 408 yards of par four, but you have that giant bunker going all the way down the left side and then the barranca on the right. Uh, the fairway closes in, pinches at about the 270 yard mark. So with all that's going on and as narrow as it gets, you have to hit it straight off the tee here. This one starting a hair right. No problems there. That's going to wind up safely in the fairway. Walking the course today, let's bring in Nota Begay the third. He's got 103 yards to the front, 109 to the hole, coming off a birdie at the previous hole, looking to go back to back. Sandwich takes flight, and I don't think it's going to carry. Well, he'll be disappointed with that, no doubt. Your swing didn't quite look right on that one. Ten foot putt left. Not that time. Pretty good effort, but it'll wander a couple of feet by. That one in. It is a bogey here at the seventh. He'll drop out of the lead and wind up a shot back. Well, great design. And Riviera, everyone agrees, is one of the best designs in the world. Great design makes you think. It gives you options. So what do you do here at this 433-yard par 4 eighth? You're going to go left side <laughs> or right side. Take your pick. Well, today's hole location is cut front right, so this drive down the left side couldn't be any better. Yeah, that's a good shot. Decided to go for the right side fairway, and that's in good shape. From the fairway, we check in with Noda. From the left side fairway, the hole really opens up. Great angle to access. Holes cut along the right side of this green, but beware, don't go long and right because the ball will run toward the ravine. Uh, trying to go for the right side fairway here, but this is a bit too far right, and it's going to end up in the rough. The strike was fine on the pitch shot. Ball first, then turf. Just wasn't really hit hard enough. Ah, yes, a perfect read there. That is in to save far. And he'll remain one shot back. We finish up the front side at Riviera with a 458-yard par-4 ninth, one of the finest par-4s in the game. A long, straight drive. If he can manage it, we'll take the two fairway bunkers out of play. Yeah, nothing to fault there. Good balance, good follow through, and a good start to this hole. From the fairway, let's go to Noda. 
Beautiful look at the ninth with the clubhouse in the background, but players beware, severely uphill, whatever club you select, add one more. This will be a 14-foot putt here. Oh, never in doubt. What a great putt that is. It's a birdie here at the ninth. And that will mean it's an even par score of 35 on this front side. Well, this hole, the 315-yard par 4 tenth, has been talked about so much. If you ask the professionals what's the best short par 4 in the world, most will point to this. It, it's all about options and that little sliver of a green which causes players headaches. This one is, is not just about the length, obviously, but it is a really strategic play. And that one not quite able to hang on. It's into the bunker. Well, going to get a chance to try that again. Awkward little bunker shot. Just splash it out, let the ball run towards the flag. Boy, that was on an aggressive line. Couldn't quite get it to stop. And that will be left for par. Safely in. It's a par here at the 10. And he'll stay at 700. Arriving now at the second par 5 on the course, the 583-yard 11th. Eucalyptus trees lining both sides of the fairway and a grass rank about 200 yards from the green has to be navigated on your second shot. Looking for a strong finishing kick here on this Friday to get set up for the weekend and that another good drive here. Now from way back, better than 300 yards, a second to the par five. to recheck the yardage after that one. That's on the green, but not a real good shot. Yeah, that's really well done. From that distance, you'll take it every time. Okay, well done. It is a par here at 11, and he'll remain 
right where he is. The 12th hole at Riviera is a tricky one at 479 yards. It's narrow with OB to the left, and it forces you to carry a ravine on your approach into a green protected by a sycamore tree left and a large bunker right. Ah, too strong for this hole, eh? Run out of fairway and into the rough. Big hit, though. Second shot upcoming, down to Noda. Coming from the left rough, players need to be mindful of the tree protecting the left part of the screen because it will knock the ball down. Certainly had enough power, just didn't have any touch. Lovely pitch shot. Just nipped that ball off the turf. Just flew through the air beautifully. Sat down fairly quick as well. Good shot. No missteps there. It'll a par here at 12. And he'll stay right where he is. Next, it's on to the 13th at 459 yards, where the 12th bent left to right Number 13 goes the other way, trying to make you utilize all the shots in your arsenal. That's the mark of a really good design. This one again featuring a narrow landing zone leading up to a smallish heart-shaped green. There's no way that ball could have gone through the tree, but somehow it did. It's finished up actually all right. From the fairway nota, this is second. Looking at 148 to the hole, standing on even par, looking to go under for the day. That is always so disappointing from that kind of a spot when you come up short. Yeah, you're licking your chops over that one. A shot you think you could hit directly at the flag. Uh, now, test for the short game. Well, Frank, this is a case where a par is going to feel like an eagle if he's able to get this done. If he can just make it, just make this putt, then just, like, run to the next tee. Nah, the putter bails him out there. That's in for a par. And he'll remain right where he is. Onward now to the 14th at par 3 at 192 yards. Flanked by bunkers, this green is wider than it is deep, making it important to get one up in the air and stop it quickly.
Boy, this is just way too much club for a front hole location. That was completely overcooked. Oh, missed the green at the par three. No problem. That is in from off the putting surface for an unlikely two. Next up, the par four 15th at 487 yards. It's another one that favors someone who can move the ball left to right off the tee. If you've got enough to work it over that fairway bunker right, it should leave you with an open look to a fairly accessible green. Looking for a strong finishing kick here on this Friday to get set up for the weekend and that another good drive here. Wind coming from his right as he gets set for his second. Imagine a miss club because that ball sailed past the flag. Really just fortunate to stay on the back of the green. I'll tell you what, lag putting such an underrated part of the game, and that is well done there. Okay, a solid par here at the 15th. This will stay a one-shot lead. On now to the 16th at 166 yards. It's the smallest green on the course, but the difficulties don't end there. It's also surrounded by three deep and large bunkers. Plus, that tree left of the tee box can get you if you're not careful. A very sensible play there, right in the middle of the green. A birdie putt now at 16. And he's left this in a good spot. Very little break, maybe a hair to the right, but no real elevation changes at all. Nah, that's going to wander off to the right and leave maybe two, three feet coming back. He'll finish that one off with no problem. It's in for par. And this will remain a one-shot advantage. Next up, the longest hole on the course at 590 yards, the par 517. It plays slightly uphill the entire way as it works toward the clubhouse and features bunkers on either side of the fairway. Well, you can't walk out and drop it any better than that. That is a fine tee shot right there. Still well over 300 yards to the flag. So getting this to a good number, the key here for his second. Well, just a good solid shot right there with that three wood, Frank. That's an aggressive layup, really, trying to force that three-wood down and get it as close as possible to the green. That's two good shots if you can't reach the par five. will make it onto the putting surface, but ultimately 
Not a real good shot. He might like this one. He might really like it. Oh, that is a good judge of speed right there. Expertly done. Okay, that one finished off for a par. And he's going to remain at eight under. Such a unique closing hole. The 18th here at Riviera at 475 yards. You're asked to hit your tee shot onto a 30-foot rise that features hillside to the left and gully to the right. From there, it is a tough approach into the amphitheater green. Looking for a strong finishing kick here on this Friday to get set up for the weekend. And that, another good drive here. From the fairway, we check in with Noda. Tough not to get distracted with the majestic amphitheater setting here at the 18th at Riviera. But be mindful, you must land the ball left of the hole to get it close. Well, not as close to the pin as you'd like, but when you find greens in regulation on a regular basis, you're going to have a chance. I'll tell you what, lag putting such an underrated part of the game, and that is well done there. Okay, safely in for his par at 18. And that will be a second round score of 70. So an action-packed first two rounds and a packed leaderboard as well with our featured golfer in a share of the lead after day two. So we can't separate them at this stage, but somebody, and I guarantee you somebody will play lights out in the weekend, and that will be the difference. So that should just about do it for all of us at EA Sports. Thanks for spending some time with us on the road to the Masters. Sports and the Corn Ferry Tour are proud to bring you this look at the future stars in the sport of golf. We're a couple of blocks off of fabled Sunset Boulevard at Riviera Country Club for third round coverage of the California Classic. Rich Lerner here in our tower overlooking the 18th green. Frank Navalo is by my side. Out on the course, we've got Nota Begay the third and Iona Steven as we check the Saturday leaderboard. Nope, that's into the left rough, and that will be a big ask to get home in two here on this first hole. Really hit that second shot on the button to this par five, but Frank couldn't get it to stop. Yeah, too good, too long, sadly. Mm, got it there, but not quite on target.
Okay, a well-played hole there. It is birdie to kick off the round. And he'll move it to one under for his round. Minus nine for the tournament. So while you're looking to make birdie at number one, you'd be happy with a par four at this second hole. It's 471 yards, but the winds are a factor. It is a strong par four. And this round starting off strong after the birdie at the first. This in the fairway at number two. Second shot now. It has to be careful because that breeze can be tricky at his back. You don't want to over club. Well, had a good look at the green, but couldn't cash it in. In the rough now, wondering what might have been. This from seven feet. Okay, that's good putt. It is in to save par. And it'll stay at minus nine. Moving now to the 434 yard, par four third at Riviera. Best way to attack here is to carry that fairway bunker on the left to set up a good angle on your approach. Oh, and it's a narrow fairway here at three, but that'll be in a great spot. Second shot straight ahead, and we go to Iona Steven. The number is one, two, nine, all the way to the flagstick. Pin on the left portion of this green, so it will favor a wee draw. about ready to walk that in. That looked on target the whole way. So that safely in. It's a far view at the third. And he'll stay right where he is. Arriving now at the 236 yard par three fourth, what Ben Crenshaw once called the greatest par three hole in America by praise from the 19 time PGA Tour winner. And that's certainly not what you have in mind standing on the tee box. That never had a chance of hitting the green. And 
this will be a five foot putt here. Nicely done as he rolls that in for his par. And he'll remain right where he is. You can see here at the par 4 fifth, there's a lot going on. It is one of the most interesting holes at Riviera, that canyon wall and out of bounds on the right. Then you have the trees down the left. But what really makes this hole distinctive is that grass mound cutting into the fairway just short of the green. That is not where you want to be. That's up on the hill right of this fifth fairway. From off the fairway, this is second at number five. I like the looks of this one. That's a good shot, and more importantly, too, a green in regulation, so birdie chance. Oh, how about it? A beauty there. It is in for a birdie, and he gets it to two under for his round, 11 under now for the tournament. You won't come across too many like this. Riviera's fame, par 3 6 at 199 yards. Hard to focus on anything other than that distinctive bunker cut right into the middle of the green. Finding the proper level is imperative here because getting it wrong can create all kinds of unique problems. Sigh of relief there. This tee shot avoids the bunker in the middle of the green, and it leaves a direct look here at birdie. Ah, yeah, well done. It's back-to-back -back birdies here on this front side. And he'll move to 11 under par. Moving on to the seventh, 408-yard par four with a massive bunker running down the left side and a barranca down the right. Fairway narrows considerably at the 270-yard mark, so accuracy off the tee, critical. This one started up the right side. Beautiful tempo to that swing, and this is going to wind up squarely in the fairway. Down on the course, let's check in with Nota Begay the third. 115 yards left, wind definitely hurting in his face.
sandwich takes flight and I don't think it's going to carry. Well, had a good lie in the fairway, but couldn't do anything with it. That comes up woefully short. Lovely pitch shot. Just nipped that ball off the turf. Just flew through the air beautifully. Sat down fairly quick as well. Good shot. That one finished off. It'll be a par here at seven. And he'll stay at 11 under par. The surprises don't stop here on Riviera's front side as we come to the 433-yard par 48. One of course designer George C. Thomas's all-time favorites. A split fairway is the unique feature here. Like many holes, this one forces you to really have a strategy. And that will do just fine. Yeah, playing for this right side fairway, and that is right where you want to be. Now, note to his second from the fairway. 152 yards left for him. Pin sitting back right. And that ball looked good in the air. You'd like it to be a little closer, but still inside 40 feet. Just going to have to be careful with the lag putting. Close. Couldn't ask for much more on that putt. Okay, that in four par here at the eight. And he'll stay right where he is. On to Riviera's ninth now at 458 yards. You get a look at the beautiful clubhouse in the distance, but don't let your mind wander from the task at hand. This is no easy hole. Bunkers line the fairway on both sides, and three more greet you up near this elevated green. And that is dead center right down the middle here to start the hole. From the fairway. Let's go to Noda. Beautiful look at the ninth with the clubhouse in the background, but players beware severely uphill. Whatever club you select, add one more. Here we go. This one for Birdie. This is a 13 footer. Just going to sneak on by. Okay, a shake of the head as that one is finished off. And he'll fall to 10 under par. Up next, the 315-yard par 4 tenth. This may be the most beloved hole at Riviera, short par 4 that offers so many options. Certainly drivable, but only a perfect drive will hold this green. And the miss right will usually result in a bogey or worse. And 
that I do believe is into the bunker. The tee shot collected here, now a short one for his second. Okay, a good out, and that's what will remain for birdie. Yes, rolls it right in. A birdie here at 10. Will certainly help the cause. Again, here's a hole where you know instantly you're at Riviera. 583-yard, 11th. It's the second par 5 on the course, but you, you look at those eucalyptus trees lining both sides of the fairway. That's Riviera. And then the grass barranca, which is a couple of hundred yards from the green. You have to factor that in on your second shot. Terrific hole. Turning out to be a wonderful Saturday of golf here, and this... Another fine tee shot. Now from just under 300 yards, a second from the fairway at the par five. I'm not sure he got every bit of that three-way trying to get home to this par five and two, but still in the ball game for a birdie. This will move to his right for birdie. Yeah, that's good putt. A birdie here at one. And he gets it to 12 under par. Up next, a toughie, the 479-yard par 412. It is a gentle left to right, so fading the ball is encouraged. Up near the green... Beware of that lone sycamore tree known as the Humphrey Bogart tree, so named because he loved watching golf and relaxing under its shade. Somehow that ball went through the trees. Actually, it didn't scrub too much speed off it. It's going to be all right. Didn't check, Frank. Yeah, just not enough spin on that, um, really. I mean, that almost like took that first bounce and just ricocheted forward. Boy, all the elements of his game have been in sync today. A terrific shot right there. It's all about getting it inside that three-foot circle around the hole. That was a really nice shot. That one safely in. It's a par here at 12. And he's going to hold on to that three-shot lead. Well, here's the genius of the design at Riviera. Number 12 was asking you to hit a little bit of a fade. 13, well, they're telling you to hit a draw. That's a good golf course when you have to work the ball both ways. This is a really tough driving hole.
He's got to be careful here. Downhill, he's got to time it good because your weight's a little bit more on your front foot. And that's not exactly ideal, far from a tap-in for his part. You're being too kind. Uh, that's not at all ideal. Nope. Okay, that one finished off. It is a bogey here at unlucky number 13. And that's going to tighten things up a little as the lead is down to two. I'll head now to the 14th, the par three at 192 yards. This green's on a slight incline, and given the ocean air, probably plays a little longer than you think. The narrow green is flanked by two bunkers left and another to the right. Boy, that one was coming in hot, and it winds up carrying over the back of the green. Eleven feet away. Routine about that one. Well done to roll it in for par. And he'll remain right where he is. The 15th hole here at Riviera at 487 yards of par four. It is the number two handicap hole, so that can speak to its difficulty. The one well placed bunker at the elbow of the dog leg must be avoided, and the green is believed by many to be the toughest to read on the course. Turning out to be a wonderful Saturday of golf here, and this, another fine tee shot. So a breeze at his back as he readies his second to the par four. Uh, that's not too bad. Good shot. Uh, inside 20 feet, I would imagine. So a good chance, really, an outside chance for Betty. Ah, the pace. Absolutely perfect there. Down the slope. It's in for a birdie. And he will definitely not say no to that. The 16th hold at Riviera, the final par three of the round. It's a tough one at 166 yards. Hit it anywhere on the putting surface, you'll likely be just fine. Miss, and you're almost certain to be in one of the four bunkers framing the entirety of the green.
Frank landed it on the green. It was never going to stop. No, no chance. Okay, that should be inside of 10 feet. Not too bad. Okay, didn't want to let that one get away. It is a par here at 16, and he'll remain at minus 12. We make our final turn back up toward the clubhouse as we come to the 590-yard par 517. Getting on here in two is no sure thing, especially given all the bunkers that pop up along the way. Turning out to be a wonderful Saturday of golf here, and this, another fine tee shot. Now from better than 300 yards out, a second to the par five. Well, not quite enough on that one, Frank. Yeah, coming out of the rough, uh, not surprising. But considerably short. Yeah, that's good point. It is in for par here at 17. And he'll stay right where he is. Here's a tough one to finish out our day at Riviera, the famous 475-yard par 4 18. This one, cut right up against the side of the hill on the left. You'll need to keep something in the fairway here to have a good approach into that renowned 18th green. Yeah, that's a nice swing, and the result is going to be a tee shot that is set up just fine. From the fairway, we check in with Noda. Tough not to get distracted with the majestic amphitheater setting here at the 18th at Riviera, but be mindful, you must land the ball left of the hole to get it close. That's a disappointment right there, Frank. Yeah, green light special, really. Come up considerably short. Well, obviously that's not his best, but it'll be quickly forgotten, Frank, if he's able to get out of here with his par. Well, you might forget it. I won't. <laughs> Far from his best. That is going to leave a sour taste here at the end of the round. Okay, a shake of the head as that one is finished off. And he's going to fall out of the lead and wind up a shot back. I mean, this has been a captivating tournament so far. And our featured golfer, just a shot back, heading into Sunday's final round. It's going to be exciting, Frank. Certainly will be, Rich. One of the greatest players of all time, Ben Hogan, used to say, and I don't know why, I would rather be one behind than one in front. So that'll do it for my partner here in the tower, Frank Nabilo. For Nota Begay, Iona Steven, and all our crew, Rich Lerner saying, we'll see you next time on EA Sports EGA Tour.
EA Sports and the Corn Ferry Tour bring you the best young talent in the world of golf. From Pacific Palisades, just west of Los Angeles Riviera Country Club, the site for this, the final round of the California Classic. It is the great challenge that all these golfers face, trying to string four solid rounds together, trying to best mother nature and this course, and trying to beat the entire field as we check the leaderboard. Yeah, this is going to work just fine. That fairway runs out fairly quickly, but this is right where you want to be. This is really exciting. Out there looking for that first professional victory on the Corn Ferry Tour in contention late on a Sunday final round. Nota, you've been there. You've broken through. What do you, in fact, learn from a situation like this? Well, it's a two-part situation, Rich. The first is believing that you have the ability to go out there and execute and finish this thing off. And the second is just dealing with the nerves and, and the pressure that go along with these big moments. And being able to handle both of those components as you work through the final round is an essential part to putting together that winning recipe. Oh, he made it. What a start to this round. An eagle here at the first hole. And if that is a harbinger of what's to come, he may be in for a special and memorable round of golf. Next up, the number one handicap hole at Riviera, the 471-yard par four second, playing into the prevailing ocean breeze, making it play that much longer. Par is a very good score here. And a great tee shot there coming off the eagle at one in the fairway and looking for more at number two. That just came out blazing. As soon as it hit the green, it was never going to stop. But well, those are the shots that turn what you'd like to be a leisurely stroll out on the golf course into a day of hard work. Yeah, what could have been a tap in is now going to be a grind. Ah, uh, good putt there. It's in for par here at the second. And the lead will remain one. Not a long hole here. The third at Riviera, just 434 yards. This is about position, and really the best way to get at the hole location is to sail it over that fairway bunker on the left. That'll give you a really good angle. Driving's been sensation all week, and here's another one that's going to set up nicely in the fairway. Second shot coming up, and we say hello to Iona Steven. Well, he's looking at 120 yards remaining to the flagstick. Wind coming from behind, so you'll need to be careful where you land it. Ah, uh, good shot. Safely on the green and a birdie chance. 13 feet away. Let's go. Mm, got it there, but not quite on target. Okay, safely in for his par. And this is going to stay a two-shot lead. Well, this is just a great par three. 236 yards, the fourth hole. And as they like to say on tour, you can't fake this one. This will take your best shot, and you'd be happy with a three here. A 
that is going to miss off to the left. So now par going to be very difficult from there. Coming up, Roses for our leader. How about this? Holding it from off the green to extend that lead. Up next, Riviera's 434 yard par 4 fifth. A lot to worry about here. Canyon wall and OB on the right, trees down the left, and of course, the iconic grass mound, which cuts into the fairway short of the green. No issues here. That is into the fairway. Wasn't right down the middle, but it wasn't bad at all. Coming at this second shot from the right side of the fairway. That one finished off. It is a part here at five. And this will remain a three-shot lead. Now to the sixth, affectionately known in some circles as the donut hole. And it's easy to see why. One hot bunker dead in the center of the green. And that's the genius of the hole. As it takes away the safe spot and forces you to play target golf. Now from the bunker. Just a little splash out on this par three. Maybe a little frustration there. Got a little too much sand and not enough golf ball and that will come up quite a bit short. Already terrific putt there to save par. And he'll remain at 14 under. Here's another hole that is distinctly Riviera. 408 yards of par four, but you have that giant bunker going all the way down the left side and then the barranca on the right. Uh, the fairway closes in, pinches at about the 270 yard mark. So with all that's going on and as narrow as it gets, you have to hit it straight off the tee here. This one's starting a little bit right. 
just what you want at this point in the round. You're trying to find a rhythm, hit fairways, hit the middle of the club face. That's what they did right there. From the fairway, Iona, this is second. 127 yards, that's what he's looking at down the flagstick, pin in the middle, so it's a green light. Yep, well done. That's in for par here at seven. And he'll remain right where he is. Well, great design. And Riviera, everyone agrees, is one of the best designs in the world. Great design makes you think. It gives you options. So what do you do here at this 433-yard par 4 eighth? You're going to go left side or right side? Take your pick. Boy, the rhythm is definitely there today. Another wonderful tee shot. Yeah, that's good shot. Decided to go for the right side fairway, and that's in good shape. Gotta think this an extra half club or more as he sets for a second into the wind. And a good approach shot, just not quite as close as what you'd like, but still solid. A long one coming up here for birdie. Oh, yes. Plenty of pace to get up that slope. It is in for a birdie. He moves to 15 under. We finish up the front side at Riviera with a 458-yard par-4 ninth, one of the finest par-4s in the game. A long, straight drive. If he can manage it, we'll take the two fairway bunkers out of play. That one going to split the middle, maybe get a little rollout as well. That is a good, solid tee shot. Second shot coming now from just over 170 yards. That's got to be disappointing. Good line in the fairway and the approach winds up in a bunker. Digs into the bunker, getting set to play the third shot. Okay, safely on the putting surface out of the sand. Maybe like to run that up a little further, but that's not the worst shot in the world. Right about nine feet here to the hole. Good putt, it's in for par here at the ninth, and that will be a sizzling 31 on the front side, four under par. Well, this hole, the 315-yard par 4 tenth, has been talked about so much. If you ask the professionals what's the best short par 4 in the world, most will point to this. It, it's all about options in that little sliver of a green which causes players headaches. This one is, is not just about the length, obviously, but it is a really strategic play. He 
just keeps motoring right along. Another good tee shot right there. Well done there. It's a birdie to kick off a back nine. And after missing the cut in last week's event, what a turnaround as he tries to finish off a victory here. Arriving now at the second par five of the course, the 583-yard 11th. Eucalyptus trees lining both sides of the fairway and a grass barranca about 200 yards from the green has to be navigated on your second shot. Okay, that's going to be just fine, short of the road. Good tee shot here at 11. Now a second from well over 300 yards. This will be about positioning. This will be the fourth shot now coming out of the bunker. Yeah, look out. Kind of sculled that one, and that's going to be over the green and into the rough. Well, obviously, he can do better, and he's going to have to on this next putt if he wants to just get out of here with bogey, Frank. And this one's certainly going to be, uh, well, worth the price of admission. Yeah, that's a good roll there to come away with just a bogey at this par five. And that could make things a little more interesting as the lead's down to three. The 12th hole at Riviera is a tricky one at 479 yards. It's narrow with OB to the left, and it forces you to carry a ravine on your approach into a green protected by a sycamore tree left and a large bunker right. No problems there. That's going to wind up safely in the fairway. Second shot coming up. Let's check in for the first time with Notovigay the third. Left himself with 149, coming off a bogey on the previous hole. Got to get it back here. This is a nine footer. Mm, that slides by to the right. Just never had that on target. So a tough hole. And it's in for bogey at 12. And the lead, precarious now. It is down to a single shot. 
Next, it's on to the 13th at 459 yards, where the 12th bent left to right. Number 13 goes the other way, trying to make you utilize all the shots in your arsenal. That's the mark of a really good design. This one again featuring a narrow landing zone leading up to a smallish heart-shaped green. Uh-oh, this is well left. Ah, that hit that tree hot and bounced straight into the rough. Not in the fairway, but not a real problem here at the 13th, getting set to play his second shot. Certainly had enough power, just didn't have any touch. Well judged, that is in for par here at 13. And that's going to preserve this tenuous one-shot lead. Onward now to the 14th at par 3 at 192 yards. Flanked by bunkers, this green is wider than it is deep, making it important to get one up in the air and stop it quickly. Boy, that ball got caught in the breeze and it was just along for the ride. Much too firm there. Okay, good putt. And a par here at 14. And this will remain a one-shot advantage. Next up, the par 4 15th at 487 yards. It's another one that favors someone who can move the ball left to right off the tee. If you've got enough to work it over that fairway bunker right, it should leave you with an open look to a fairly accessible green. Ah, too strong for this hole, eh? Ran out of fairway and into the rough. Big hit, though. From the rough, we check in with Noda. He's got 157 yards to the front, 160 to the hole. Ball sitting up very nicely in the rough. Well, too bad, Frank. That one rolled right off the green. It was just coming out so hot. The strike was fine on the pitch shot. Ball first, then turf. Just wasn't really hit hard enough. Seems unfair sometimes. That looked in the whole way. Okay, a bogey here at the 15th. That'll drop him out of the top spot and leave him a shot back. 
On now to the 16th at 166 yards. It's the smallest green on the course, but the difficulties don't end there. It's also surrounded by three deep and large bunkers. Plus, that tree left of the tee box can get you if you're not careful. Yeah, that one came in a little hot. It's safely on, but it'll be a long look coming up. Substantial movement on this putt right to left, and it's from distance. So this one not just about speed, but line as well. able to save his par. It'll hold tight at minus 13. Next up, the longest hole on the course at 590 yards, the par 517. It plays slightly uphill the entire way as it works toward the clubhouse and features bunkers on either side of the fairway. That's right where you want to be. A good drive here at the 17th with the tournament on the line. Still well over 300 yards to the flag. So getting this to a good number, the key here for his second. Set up for his third shot here, looking to get it on the green with this. This hole's been a bit of a struggle, but beautiful short shot and a chance to get away with the par. Yeah, well done. That's in for par. And the lead will stay at one with just the 18th hole left to play. Such a unique closing hole. The 18th here at Riviera at 475 yards. You're asked to hit your tee shot onto a 30-foot rise that features hillside to the left and gully to the right. From there, it is a tough approach into the amphitheater green.
Yeah, nothing to fault there. Good balance, good follow through, and a good start to this hole. From the fairway, let's go to Noda. Tough not to get distracted with the majestic amphitheater setting here at the 18th at Riviera, but be mindful, you must land the ball left of the hole to get it close. Well, had a good look at the green, but couldn't cash it in. In the rough now, wondering what might have been. Maybe a misread there, and that curls by to the left. Okay, a shake of the head as that one is finished off. And that's going to move him back down to even par. So our featured golfer, Frank, he was tremendous this week, and he's going to walk away with the title. That was a stout performance, Rich, strong as an ox, and uh, well, just did not wilt. And the rest of the field, that was just begging to finish second. So that's a wrap for all of us at EA Sports PGA Tour. Thanks for coming along. We'll see you next time on the road to the Masters. The 16th hole at Riviera, the final par three of the round. It's a tough one at 166 yards. Hit it anywhere on the putting surface, you'll likely be just fine. Miss, and you're almost certain to be in one of the four bunkers framing the entirety of the green. And he maybe didn't want to risk going over, so this ball well short of the hole and a long look coming up for birdie. Couldn't get that one on target. Okay, that in for a bogey at 16. And that's going to drop his score back to 12 under par.